Mavis and I'm a lay minister at Christ Church Felling and I'd like to welcome you all to today's service for the Gateshead Deanery. I was buried beneath my shame Who could care my tune 
till I'm near you yeah. I was breathing but not alive All my fears I try to hide It was my tomb Till I met you You called my name And I ran out of that grave Out of the darkness Into your glorious day You called my name And I ran out of that grave Out of the darkness Into your glorious day Now your mercy has saved my soul Now your freedom is all Lord, you have called us to the privilege of service, but we have failed to serve. You have given us the blessing of peace, but we have chosen discord. You have loved as a shepherd tends his sheep, but we have strayed from your way. Forgive us and show us the path of obedience and faithfulness that your Son trod. In his name we pray. Amen. Today's reading is taken from Romans chapter 5, reading from verses 1 to 8. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into his grace in which we now stand, and we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Not only so, but we also rejoice in our sufferings, because we know that sufferance produces perseverance, 
Perseverance is character and character hope. And hope does not disappoint us because God has poured out his love into our hearts by the Holy Spirit whom he has given us. You see, as just the right time when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous man, though for a good man some might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Today's Gospel reading is taken from Matthew chapter 9 verse 35 through to chapter 10 verse 8. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus went through all the towns and villages, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the good news of the kingdom and healing every disease and sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without the shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. He called his twelve disciples to him and gave them authority to drive out evil spirits and to heal every disease and sickness. These are the names of the twelve apostles. First Simon, who was called Peter, and his brother Andrew. James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John. Philip and Bartholomew. Thomas and Matthew, the tax collectors. James, son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus. Simon the Zealot and Judas Iscariot, who betrayed him. These twelve Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Do not go among the Gentiles or enter any town of the Samaritans. Go rather to the lost sheep of Israel. As you go, preach this message. The kingdom of heaven is near. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse those who have leprosy, drive out demons. Freely you have received freely give. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. How great the chasm that lay between us How high the mountain I could not climb Desperation, I turned to heaven and spoke your name into the night. Then through the darkness, your loving kindness tore through the shadows of my soul. The work is finished. The end is written, Jesus Christ, my living hope. Who could imagine so great a mercy? What heart could fathom such boundless grace? Down from glory to wear my sin and bear my shame. The cross is spoken, I am forgiven. The King of Kings calls me his own. Beautiful Savior, I'm yours forever. Jesus Christ, my living hope. Hallelujah, praise the water, set me free. Hallelujah, death has lost its grip on 
Out of the silence, the roaring lion declared the grave has no claim on me. Then came the morning that sealed the promise. Your buried body began to breathe. Out of the silence, the roaring lion declared the grave has no claim on me. Collect for the first Sunday after Trinity. O God, the strength of all those who put their trust in you, mercifully accept our prayers. And because through the weakness of our mortal nature we can do no good thing without you, grant us the help of your grace that in the keeping of your commandments we may please you both in will and deed. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Are you a carrot, an egg or a coffee bean? A young woman went to her mother and told her about her life and how things were so hard. She didn't know how she was going to make it and wanted to give up. She was tired of fighting and struggling, and it seemed as soon as one problem was solved, another one appeared. Her mother took her to the kitchen and filled three pots of water. In the first one, she placed carrots. In the second, she placed eggs. And in the last, she placed ground coffee beans. She let them sit and boil without saying a word. About 20 minutes later, she turned off the burners. She fished the carrots out, placed them in a bowl, pulled the eggs out, placed them in a bowl, and she ladled the coffee out and placed it in a bowl. Turning to her daughter, she said, tell me what you see. Carrots, eggs and coffee, she replied. So the man brought her closer and asked her to feel the carrots. She did, and she noted how felt sorry how soft they felt. She then asked her to take an egg and break it. After pulling off the shell, she observed the hard-boiled egg inside. Finally, she asked her to sip the coffee. The daughter smiled as she tasted its rich aroma, and then asked, So what's the point, ma'am? Her mother explained that each of these objects had faced the same adversity, boiling water, but each had reacted differently. The carrot went in strong, hard and unrelenting, but after being subjected to boiling water, it softened and became weak. The egg had been fragile. Its thin outer shell had protected its liquid centre, but after sitting through the boiling water, its insides had become hardened. The ground coffee beans were unique, however, 
After they were in the boiling water, they had changed the water. So which are you? she asked her daughter. When adversity knocks on your door, how do you respond? Are you a carrot, an egg or a coffee bean? So think about this. Which am I? Am I the carrot that seems strong but with pain and adversity do I wilt and become soft and lose my strength? Am I the egg that starts with a malleable heart but changes with the heat? Did I have a fluid spirit but after a death, a breakup, financial hardship or some other trial have I become hardened and stiff? Does my outer shell look the same? But on the inside, am I bitter and tough, with a stiff spirit and a hardened heart? Or am I like the coffee bean? The bean actually changes hot water. The very circumstances that bring the pain when the water gets hot releases the fragrance and flavour of the bean. If you are like the bean, when things are at their worst, you get better and change the situation around you instead of letting it change you. So when the hours are the darkest and trials are the greatest, do you elevate to another level? How do you handle adversity? Are you a carrot, an egg or a coffee bean? So how have you been coping with lockdown and all it entails? I don't envy you if you've been working from home or trying to homeschool children because that's not what you signed up for. And it's hard if you can't see your children and grandchildren. I'm fortunate that mine all live locally, but having to stand on the path and not coming into the house is very strange. I miss meeting my friends for a coffee and a catch-up. But we've all had to make changes to how we live our daily lives. Some changes have turned out better than others. And it's good to see posts on Facebook that were positive, the humour and funny stories and sometimes just to hear how other people were coping. I was annoyed at a reporter on TV saying the church was closed. Yes, the building is closed, but the church, that's you and me, we're as busy as ever. 95% of my church work is out in the community. I'm a volunteer with the Felon Food Network. I take funerals, I visit people, and of course I've had to have Zoom meetings. And if I had a pound for every visit when the person apologised for not inviting me in, I'd be rich. So what changes have you had to make or perhaps do things a bit differently? Has it been a test for you, a trial, adversity? As part of my daily prayer time, I have an app on my phone called Lectio 365 and it's really good. And it's up to date as well. In one of the days, it talked about the Israelites being exiled in Babylon, a strange land, not being able to worship God properly, but their songs kept them going. What has you? What has kept you going? Are you a carrot, an egg or a coffee bean? Have you seen the film Pollyanna? I'm talking to the older people here. It came out in the late 50s, 60s. And Pollyanna plays the glad game with different people who aren't happy with their lives. Basically, it's finding something to be glad about in every situation. And of course, it's a tearjerker. Would playing the glad game help you every day? Instead of complaining, to try and be glad and grateful. Two weeks ago, we heard about the disciples being locked in the upper room, frightened to go out in case Roman soldiers saw them. And we've been locked down, although one lady said she was locked up, and I think I like that better. But we can't see the virus, so it's hard to deal with an unseen enemy. The early church had to adapt and change constantly, and St Paul had a job to keep them on track, as his many letters tell us. The Romans reading today talks about suffering, which produces endurance, which in turn produces character and which produces hope. And hope is so important. And we have the sure and certain hope in Christ Jesus because we have the Holy Spirit living in us. I love my Christian music CDs. And it's been difficult to get the music for this service today as we don't have an organist. We use song pro in church as we sing mostly modern songs. 
So we're grateful to Ken Riley for giving permission to use his music. We love singing in our church. It's a big part of our worship. And we can't wait when we can worship together again. But we might have to do our services in a different way. We don't know, but we have the hope in the Lord that it will happen and soon. But this pandemic's given us new has given us the chance to try new things. Have you discovered new skills or talents? Perhaps it's a chance for us to try new ways of being church, new ways of sharing the good news of Christ Jesus. Have you helped someone by doing their shopping or just saying hello over the garden fence? A lady I know said she has been able to get to know her neighbours at a social distance, of course, because usually they're all dashing off to work and no one has time to chat. But I hope we've all learned something about ourselves and that in the future we will stop and make time for ourselves and for others. I do hope we won't go back to bad habits. We could try new ways of being church. In the Gospel reading we heard about Jesus proclaiming the good news, healing the sick, having compassion for people and giving his disciples the authority to do the same. We are his disciples in this time, and we are called to do the same. My friend lives in heaven and was doing our front garden. An elderly man collapsed outside on the path. She rushed out to help, and another neighbour came over as well, managed to sit him up, and someone phoned his daughter. She came round in her car for him and thanked everyone. A couple of days later, there was a knock at my friend's door, and the lady gave her a tray of goodies for being a good Samaritan. Apparently two people are nominated each week for an act of kindness in the community. My friend was embarrassed and felt she didn't deserve it, as it was nothing really, it was what anyone would have done. But she didn't stop to think, she just saw someone in trouble and went to help. And as Christians we ought to be like that. If we see need or someone in trouble, we need to help without seeking praise or recognition. So what about you? Are you helping others? It doesn't have to be a mega thing. Are you making a difference in your community, your workplace? Being God's people, our calling is to teach, proclaim and show God's love through Jesus and the Holy Spirit within us. Are you an obstacle or an encourager? What is your gift? Are you using it? Are you a carrot, an egg or a coffee bean? Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, and was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As we come together in a time of prayer, the response to the words, Lord, hear us, or Lord, graciously hear us. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Loving Lord, you call and equip us to serve you. Watch over those who risk their own safety by caring for oppressed believers. Strengthen and protect all those who are persecuted for sharing their faith in places where living out their Christian faith in peace is not allowed. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Loving Lord, you empower us to live out our discipleship. Give wisdom, imagination and the strength to persevere to those who face apathy as they seek to live out their discipleship. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Loving Lord, 
you understand what it means to suffer for what is right. Give comfort and courage to those who are unjustly imprisoned, intimidated and tortured because of their faith. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Loving Lord, you taught us to pray for those who abuse and hurt us. We pray for people who persecute those who hold different beliefs from their own. May they be touched by faith and their hearts be open to love, that the world may be united in your love. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Jesus sent the disciples to proclaim the gospel, to cure the sick, to raise the dead, to welcome the outcasts, to cast out demons. Jesus calls us to do the same. Jesus, help us to be your disciples. Amen. As our Saviour told us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, may your name be kept holy. May your kingdom come soon. May your will be done here on earth, just as it in heaven. Give us our food for today and forgive us our sins. Just we forgive those who sin against us. And don't let us yield to temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. So that was the Lord's Prayer. Oh, hopefully you liked it. Bye!
We are all one in Christ Jesus. We belong to him through faith, heirs of the promise of the spirit of peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. If you would like to text someone who's on your heart and let them know that you're thinking of them and share the peace, please do so now. And now our final closing prayers. Go to serve, go to love, go to bring healing, go to bring peace, go in the strength of the Father, go in the power of Jesus, go united by the Spirit, go and know his grace. Amen. The love of the Lord Jesus draw you to himself. The power of the Lord Jesus strengthen you in his service. The joy of the Lord Jesus fill your hearts. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you now and always. Amen.